The success of any great skin and finished product starts at the salt. We use first grade salt and we use a medium grain. It cannot be too fine, neither can it be too coarse. And one of the most important things, it cannot have any iodine in it. It's got to be non-iodinated. That is probably the very first step in this process. Good salt and a lot of good salt. From there, we'll move to where the skins are. As you can see here, we've got some skins that have been in the salt for a little while. This particular skin is a Cape Elan skin. And what you'll notice and what I love seeing when coming to the skinning shirt and seeing what the guys are busy with and the work they've been doing is, you'll actually notice how clean this salt is. So this salt, obviously salting a rather large animal such as an Elan Cape, it's a big skin. It's, it's much bigger than your average skin. And a skin like that holds a lot of moisture. The drip drying process after the caping and the washing has been done is of utmost importance to ensure as little moisture is left on the skin when we come and place it in the salt. So when I come in and I see salt this clean, I'm really happy. It tells me my guys are not over utilizing salt. It tells me the salt's being changed regularly. And at any given time when you come into the shed and you see bloody salt that has got a bit of a smell to it, those are warning signs. That's not what you want to see. You want to see clean looking healthy salt like this. This will give you the optimum skin right here. While the salting and the quality of the salt is really important, I'm going to share a little secret with you if you come with me. Wood naturally is an absorbent. So if we place a layer of salt, then the skin and another layer of salt on top of that, we now not only have the salt absorbing moisture, but we also have the wood underneath absorbing moisture. But we went one step further and we figured out if we can have a nice bit of airflow at the top of the skins, but we also have airflow underneath, right here, we have the best of both worlds. We now not only have the wood, the salt, but we also have the wind helping us dry these skins. So after about three to four, possibly five days, depending on the temperature and the weather outside, we take the skins out of the salt and we go and hang them on the racks behind us. Of utmost importance that when you hang the skin like this, you ensure that every little piece is open and folded open. And this is also a great time to check that there wasn't any little spot during the salting process that didn't get any salt. At this stage, you can still add salt to a little spot that might not have got salt and the skin will still be good. If it goes beyond this and there was a patch that was not salted, that's where the problems start occurring. When the skins initially come out and we hang them here on the first day, what you'll find is that there is a, a layer of moisture on the skin and the salt particles still drop off quite easily. At this stage, we just leave them to air dry. Within a day or two, you'll find that the salt is caked on nice and hard. And what you see here where the salt's being able to remove quite easily will not be as easy any, anymore. We've experimented with various styles of tagging. Um, this particular tag was developed by Spring Image Taxidermy. It's a non-rip canvas plastic type tag with a marker pen. We'll write your name on there. Uh, obviously, Chonic Safaris is the outfitter. And the species in this particular instance is an Impala and it is a flat skin or what you would sometimes refer to as a rug. Every single skin in here and skull in here, you will find a tag like this on it, even if it's a spare. Every single person gets their skin and their skull of the species and the animal they hunted. Over the years, we've experimented a lot with your skulls and what the best manner is to prepare them for the next part of the process. We found that in the past we would boil the skulls, the taxidermist would collect those skulls and reboil them for the final cleaning process. What that did was it caused the skulls to become brittle and a lot of our European mounts would actually have nose bones that were broken or altogether missing through the process. What we do today is we actually just clean as much of the meat off as possible. And I'm gonna use this Elan that has recently been hunted. He's a great old bull, a warrior. Tips are all worn down. And every little bit of meat possible has been cut off this bone. And what you can actually see here is that you're right onto the skull with limited amount of meat on it. If I move over from this eland and I pick up this eland that was hunted about 10 days ago and you look at him, you'll actually see the salt has dried the skull 100%. 
This cowl right here is absolutely perfect to give to the taxidermist from here. He can now do the final boiling and cleaning and that ensures that the skull stays intact and doesn't become brittle. Over the years we've uh, experimented with various products, pesticides to control the flies that obviously go hand in hand with the skinning shed. Um, but by default or by luck we kind of stumbled on something that really works. Now these guys over here, they are our local pest control. They are brilliant in keeping down flies or any maggots or anything that comes with the territory and they're probably one of the success stories in what we've discovered over the years. That's a little bit of what we do and what goes into the care of your trophies and your beautiful memories. From here, the skins and skulls leave to Spreading Image Taxidermy where they work some magic.